Welcome back to the BFB Podcast. I'm your host, Avedon Smith, and it has been a minute. I know I said that I would be recording and putting up videos a lot more frequently, but here we are with a big gap. And I do apologize. Um, I know the last video we had was an interview with Chimney Hazy. Shout out to you because you're actually one of the reasons why I'm back to recording the way I am right now. So thank you so much. Here's to my commitment that I made on that channel, on that video rather. So we're going to get more into that later on in the video, but, um, I wanted to, before we get any further, if you're listening in on our audio platform, such as Spotify, Apple Music, or wherever you are, leave us a rating and leave us a comment. Let us know how you feel about this uh, this podcast. And also, if you're watching over on YouTube, you all know the drill by now. If you've been following Avedon Smith, whether on my main channels or over here, you know how we do. If you like this video, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and most of all, most of all, you make sure you share this with a friend. Now, I'm not out, but we're gonna go ahead and get into the the um the topic for the day. And today I actually want to talk about building momentum. And really, this is gonna air towards the spiritual side of things because there's certain things that I noticed, and if you're watching here or over on YouTube, I'm pulling up pulling up on my phone a post I made on Facebook today. Now, I know, you know, you can call me older because I'm using Facebook. That's that's cool. I, I embrace it, you know, I, I appreciate y'all, but that's neither here or there. So let me go ahead and um pull this up. And I wrote earlier and said you will never gain momentum by waiting for an opportunity to arise. Seek the Father on wisdom on how to create opportunities. So I want us to really just go through some self-assessment. How many of us have been a victim of waiting for the quote unquote perfect moment or for the most pristine time to just really jump on a opportunity? And how many times have we seen just opportunities slip from our hands because we've been sitting down and waiting? For those of you uh, who follow the channel, you know that I like, you know, talk using scriptures here to bring up my point. I'm actually gonna bring one up because there's one that I've heard people use. And sadly, I've actually heard a lot of people use this to defend um, the reason why they're not active and moving forward. Hold up, allergies bothering me for a little bit. So, all right, so Isaiah 40, 31. I'm reading from, let me actually read from the King James Version. Uh, I read from that version for other reasons, but I'm not gonna get into that in this video. That could be for another video if you all are interested. But it reads, but they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. How many of us have heard that and used that and say, you know, I'm just waiting for the Lord. I'm just waiting for the Lord. I'm just waiting for the Lord to make a move. But yet you have gone weeks, months, years, decades, and nothing's changed. I mean, but how many times has that happened? Excuse the background noise, I live in an apartment. How, how many times have we gone through that? We look at the phrase, but though, but they that wait, there's an actually a Hebrew word there for that phrase called kava. And it means to wait or to look eagerly for. So when you break this word down in the Hebraic text, it doesn't mean just sitting down doing nothing. Sad to say, we 
I'm not going to say as an American culture, because I, I think this is global. We in this generation have akin the word weight to a form of activity, inactivity. And really, when you think about it in every sense, when you're waiting for something, it's actually very intentional. When you're truly waiting for something, you're not being inactive. In fact, when you're waiting for something, you're often making preparations. Let me give you an example. If you told, for those of you who, who are parents, right? If you told your child that you was taking them to Disney World, or if you told them that you was taking them to their favorite restaurant, right? Let's go to Disney World. I think I could use more with that, right? If you would say he's going to take them to Disney World, right? Or if you would take, say he's going to take, take them to Six Flags, right? They would plan out the day days in advance. Like while they're waiting, they are making plans of what they're going to do, how they want to do it in so many different ways. Like their imagination goes beyond the scope of just, oh, I'm just going to sit down and just wait into the day. Or look at Christmas, for an example. What do many children do? They write a whole list whether they're writing it to Santa, if you're you still if you I'm not judging anyone's household believes in Santa or anything, but if you go ahead and let them write their list to Santa. And I'm only saying that because growing up, I did that growing up. So I'm being very transparent and just allowing us for the sake of an example using these examples. Okay? That made no sense. But follow me. Check this out. They are preparing they make preparations my question to you and anyone listening do you make preparations in your waiting period when you say you're waiting for the lord or or now i'm i don't mean to step on toes here because i'm speaking out on what i used to do or is that a blanket excuse of i don't know what to do with my life next or I don't know what to do next. And I'm not here to be mean or anything. I'm here to to talk. I'm here to help. Because I'm not going to just bring out a problem without giving the solutions. And when it, when it comes to waiting, you have to have a plan. You have to have a plan of when, what you're going to do when the opportunity arrives. And if you're saying you're waiting for the Lord, let's actually go back and look at that scripture for a second. Because I love where there's a semicolon there, meaning the idea isn't finished for those of you who are English majors. It says they shall mount up with wings as eagles, meaning during after the waiting process, there's an expectation that they're going to rise up. And they're gonna they're gonna move like they're they're rising up is real. So is your waiting for the Lord is you know as soon as I get this this divine intervention and the Lord's word and plans going to drop down from heaven and give me all that I need. If that's your idea of waiting for the Lord, I as your brother will let you know that you are deceived because you're gonna be waiting for a very long time. And then during the midst of your time, it's going to be like that. I'm not going to call this towards any of you because I don't desire for you to be that way. But it's going to be like the servant that God deemed wicked who buried his talent and waited for his master to return. The ones that were glorified were the ones found working. In the meantime of you waiting for the Lord, what is it that you are skilled in that you can use for work? What is it that you can build upon? What skills can you build upon until you wait for the Lord? If you're waiting for the Lord for a promotion, okay, then what are you doing in the meantime to prepare yourself mentally, emotionally, and even physically for that promotion? And I know this is all about gaining momentum. You can't gain momentum if you don't know how to start first. You got to have the mindset to start. 
And when you start gaining momentum, you you got to start from step one. It's like looking at a staircase, right? And you see this, let's just say 30, 30 f- stairs, right? You could barely see the 30, th- 30th staircase, but that's probably all your line of sight can see. Why? Because you're at the bottom. So your line of vision, your line of sight can only see that 30th staircase at the top of it, the 30th staircase. You can't see what's over that 30th staircase, what's behind the walls and behind the pathways after you reach the top of the steps. And the only way that you're ever going to reach and know what's up there until you start climbing up. And here's the thing, I'm gonna bring this down and, and use this metaphor with life. You know what happens with life as you're going up the steps? Things start falling down. Things unexpectedly start to happen. And the thing about life, you gotta be prepared with things not going according to plan. That's the truth. That's the truth. You gotta expect things not to go according to plan. So you gotta know how to adjust. You gotta know how to, to maneuver. And your waiting period has to be moving. As you're moving, I'm waiting. Like, while I'm waiting on hold on a phone call, do you think, listen, how many of you, I'm a, I'm going to break this down. How many of you had to ever called the IRS? Like, if you had to ever called the IRS in the chat, let me know in the chat. How many of you had to have ever called the IRS? And put in the chat how long you had to wait. If you think that I'm going to sit here and wait on my phone for one and a half to two and a half hours being still and doing nothing, listening to boring wait time music and not proceed with my life and be in motion as I wait, you smoke it. I ain't doing that. <laughs> and I'm, I'm just being playful with my response, but we have to understand that you, you need to be able to be in motion as you're waiting you need to get the other things done and that's how you create real momentum in your life while you're waiting for the opportunities that you prayed about move move on what's already in front of you every single day there's always something to do in the day so as you are moving and you're in motion you're already going to be ready to start making even greater motions when your opportunity arises. And then when the opportunity arise, you have to follow through. You can't say I've been waiting all this time and then because it wasn't packaged the way you expect it, you don't follow through. No, you follow through regardless of the packaging and you make sure that you get it done. And that's all I got for y'all. That's all I got. It's. This was something that was on my heart to record today. I did one recording before, beforehand. Uh, it's been a while since I recorded, so you, for those of you who make content, y'all already know how that is. But I decided that I was gonna go ahead and just come on here and just start recording again because um, it was one of Chimdi's videos. I forgot which one it was, but it was a voice about your inner judgment, your inner voice. And it's basically you consistently judging yourself. And I went through that. That's why content hasn't been out for the past three months because I'm thinking that the channel has to be this way. The content has to be this way. Uh, I don't wanna do this. I don't just wanna go ahead and just talk in front of the camera even though I said I would. There was just so many different things that were just holding me back and saying, what if it's not good enough? What if it's this? What if it's that? The same thing I'm talking to you all about now was what I was suffering from. And because I did not make a motion for three months, nothing happens. We always say we wanna make a move of God. God lives inside of us. If you are a believer that is, if you are a believer in him and you have given your life towards him, then he has made the agreement to do life with you and live inside of you. So when you are a born again Christian, a move of God is you getting up and moving your two feet. And if you're not moving your two feet on different things, then that's why you're not going to see the the transformation of your life. 
we we say uh, Romans twelve two all the time. Be transformed by the renewing of your no. Do not be conformed to the world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. But we forget the previous verse where it says, "Offer yourselves as living sacrifices." You gotta you gotta give yourself up. That's 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 the biggest thing. If I know I'm off on a tangent right here, and that's the beauty of about a podcast, you can go off on a tangent here and there, and it's sometimes it's beautiful because people are blessed by this. But you gotta be okay with giving up your plans in life. You gotta be okay with saying, you know what, God, you got this, and I'm gonna follow you in what you say and what you tell me to do, no matter how it looks like. And you'd be surprised at those results. You'll be pretty, pretty, pretty pleased with what you see. So on that note, I'm going to end it here before I get the rambling. I do appreciate you all taking your time to sit and listen to me for the past 15 minutes. Yes, I looked at the time. Um, If you have not already, go ahead and check out the previous interviews. We had three great great guest on here um we had student nintendo's return where he talked about um his his growth in in music as a youtuber and even his um and how his faith guides him we also did an interview with uh, hina pierce where she has discussed uh forms of creative marketing as well as we also spoke spoke with uh, Chimdi Hazy, as I mentioned earlier, and all three of them in their own special way are creative coaches. Sorry, my mind drifted for a quick second. I'm not gonna edit that out. So I thank you all for coming out and listening into this. If you all enjoyed this video, then make sure you hit that like button, make sure you hit that subscribe button, and most of all, Most of all, you make sure you share this with a friend. This is Avadon, and I'm out. Take care, y'all.